So you want to be a kayak camper, or maybe you already are, and you want to be a better kayak camper. I'm Pete with the River Kings, and today we're going to practice kayak camping. Let's go have some fun. Okay, so I'm here on the banks of the Haw River, Saks Mahal Lake. Got my cup of chili. After I get in the boat, I'm gonna kind of put that on a floorboard between my legs. And I'm heading up to my island where I'm gonna practice some kayak camping. So we are here on the island and it's going to be easy. There's already some spots, but I mean, I could use just right here. It'd be great. But I think what I'll do is head down this way and see if there's anything better. Because that's what I would do if I was camping. So this is a little bit better beach, but it's a little bit brushy. So there's a few things I'm looking for in a campsite. And number one will always be personal safety for myself and everyone in the crew so if I come to a place that's a great campsite and I look up and there's dead trees everywhere we're not going to camp there because that's where the widow makers come from especially in a high wind situation or thunderstorms those trees and branches are going to start dropping and you're going to be strung up to them hoping <laughs> that you make it till morning it's not great also a consideration is how do I get to higher ground if the river floods now right now in North Carolina it's pretty much a drought there's nothing running there's no rain there's no rain in the forecast the rivers are really low so this island tonight would be a safe bet and I wouldn't have any issues staying here but if you are in a situation where the rivers are already primed and or there's rain in the forecast whether on you or upstream you might want to start thinking about a location on mainland that you can get to higher ground if the waters come up unexpectedly and I've definitely been there before you can check out the current river trip right up here we actually uh, it was bad I just put it like that it was awesome it's a great memory would never want to repeat it but that's part of the deal when you're kayak camping you're using the river um, at least in my case I use the river and the rivers are dynamic and sometimes that flooding occurs so this looks like the best spot after all the beach is pretty good not bad at all not much undergrowth and great hammock trees if we were camping on our trip we could fit four five six guys here no problem um, sometimes you get a little creative with how you string the hammocks between the trees but this will do just fine so okay so step one is done we found the campsite this is where we're going to stay and at this point i like to go ahead and get into gear a lot of people will take a break maybe go explore have fun if i know i'm camping here we got to get the camp set up and work through your priorities of work as we like to call them shelter number one shelter so in a rare occurrence maybe you had someone who was immersed in the water and didn't have proper gear or it's just freezing cold and they're succumbing to cold injuries in that case um, if I'm with more than one person, I will dedicate someone, usually someone like Squirrel, someone who has a lot of skills, get that fire going now. And if it's cold weather, we'll have a fire kit. You should always have a means to start a fire. And right here, actually, in my kit, uh, my dad gave me that years and years ago, thinking, hey, what do you get someone that has everything already? It's an Everstrike. It's a little waterproof fire starter. And this thing is always on my PFD when I'm out in the cold and it's a way to signal it's a way to get warm it's a way to save your life as you can see i'm not frozen i'm not wet and i'm alone i don't have anyone else to worry about no one's worrying about me everything's fine go to step one put up your shelter this will be my hammock my tarp my quilts all that that goes up number one and then we'll work on everything else
All right, step one's done. My shelter, that's the tarp itself. Uh, if it starts raining right now, I can dress under there, I can pull my gear under there, I can do everything I need to do under there, cook, whatever. Get the tarp up first. And if I'm on these big trips, a lot of times I'll bring two tarps. Um, one, redundancy is always good. If you have one tarp go down, a stick breaks it, it just falls apart in the wind, whatever you got, pulling out the second tarp could save your bacon. Also, if you wanna be able to have a place to enjoy camp, you have like a camp area tarp where everyone can come bring their chair, sit down, and it's not necessarily in someone's personal space. That can get annoying. Um, so think about two tarps. Always, always, always hang your tarp first. That's rule number one. And then put your hammock in there. And then I like to go ahead and get my quilts in there so they can be fluffing, uh, restoring the loft to the quilts because they've been packed up in the bags. Another thing I like to do is incorporate the boat when I can. It does a couple things. It brings the boat up off the water a lot of times. Uh, so if you do have flooding, uh, you're next to your boat. Number two, I'm lazy. I work hard one time, just get the boat to where I'm camping. Everything else is three feet of walk, and then I'm at my boat. So um, it also keeps me from having to use stakes or other trees or sticks to secure the tarp. So I like to incorporate the boat, keeps it close. If something starts floating away, I'm gonna hear it, it's tied to me. Uh, don't laugh, it can happen. All right, that's always quick and easy. The Warbonnet Blackbird with the webbing and buckles makes uh, tensioning everything and hooking to the tree so easy, so simple. I do have some new whoopee slings thanks to Tracy Alderson. I just haven't put them on there yet. I'll be doing that soon uh, just to give it a go. Uh, he made those for me, so shout out to Tracy. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, so the hammock's up. For the sake of filming what we're doing, I just kind of folded the tarp over back on itself one side. Uh, that way we can actually see what's going on when I'm filming the thing. But always after I get the hammock up, I'm going to go ahead and put my quilts in there and uh, let them start fluffing. That's why we do a system. Uh, packing for this in a hurry. Uh, I did not pay attention to which quilt I put in which color bag. That's why I'm practicing. Um, always like to have the same quilts in the same color bags. That way I know, looking at it, which one I'm grabbing. Because I like to put the under quilt on first. And uh, there's a funny story as to why I do that. But basically, you may be somewhere um, late at night getting into your hammock and you have your jet boil on in the corner to heat up your four season tent. And perhaps you put your top quilt on first and it's three in the morning and maybe you're half asleep. But um, then when you go to put the under quilt on, the top quilt falls off and onto the jet boil and woof, you hear a big whoosh and a flash of light. And then you, then you look and your quilt is on fire. So as you pull it, you turn yourself into a snow globe of down inside your tarp. So. Learn from me, always put the under quilt on first, especially if you're heating your four season tarp with a jet boil. 
which I guess we could just take that out of the equation anyway, but uh, lesson learned. All right, so the quilts are fluffed. What's that? Oh, you noticed that? Yes, those are my custom River King down quilts from UGQ, best quilt maker in the industry. And uh, you got the little one on the under quilt, the big one on the top, it's a printed fabric. You can, uh, you can get those if you want. Just call up Chad from UGQ, uh, let them know the River King order and tell them you want the same thing and that's what you'll get. So, um, yeah, they got all kind of options, colors and everything else, but that's the River King custom quilts. And they say that that logo adds 10 degrees of warmth while you're sleeping. Might be true, not sure. All right, everything's kind of set up. That's all I'll need to sleep in tonight. That's the basics. Got my, my tarp, my hammock, my quilts, and rain, shine, snow, freezing cold, whatever, I'll be warm in that. And that brings me to my next point. When you're camping and you're unsupported, you're basically you're just, you're gonna be out in there no matter what. Making 100% sure that you will sleep dry and warm will change your whole outlook on everything else. Even if you have to get back into wet clothes in the morning to continue your trip, all you gotta do is make it to camp and you'll be dry and warm. This is something I learned um, working with the military for about 10 years. Uh, sometimes it's just gonna suck for like the next 24, 36, 48 hours. You're not gonna be warm, you're not gonna be dry, but you know all you gotta do is make it through this and you can get back to your warm, dry stuff. It changes everything. So, uh, wind is whipping today. Perfect for filming. Thanks. Uh, anyway. So what I like to do now is tidy up the camp, like the boats, the everything, the dry bags, get all that kind of tidied up and ready for the evening. And you can tell how tired or hurried we are on a trip by how well I get that done. Sometimes I just kind of leave it a mess in the cockpit, but I like to go ahead and get everything back in the hatch if I can. And then uh, at night I have a cockpit cover, hatch covers on, keeps the boat dry, keeps critters out. Um, as soon as I tidy up, I'm gonna start making some lunch. In a new chair folks i've had this one since the beginning and i kind of just don't want to give up on it but the the bungee inside that leg came out so i've wrapped it with duct tape unwrapped it and left the sticky on there so it stays i need a new chair So one thing I absolutely love and never leave home without anymore is this camp table. Um, I'd seen these before and thought of it as something like just extra. You don't need a camp table. Um, but then my friend Iowa Matt sent us these tables and I can't go camping without anymore. I mean, obviously I could, but uh, we could go back to horse and buggy too, but no one does that. We we drive cars and trucks So you just kind of set it up real quick it Takes just a second super lightweight It's like 19 or 20 bucks 25 bucks. I can't remember um, On Amazon. There's a link in the description of the video Table and I'll always keep my charging things on the table off the ground in case it rains no water running it also gives you somewhere to eat your food and your lunch and maybe even cook your food so today I'm gonna make tea
go let that warm up and like I say today it's gonna be chamomile tea with honey because seems a little soft but it does taste good and it reminds me of my wife and she actually hooked me up one time she brought home a bunch of these honeys from chick-fil-a and how did I miss that and another reason for doing this is you can try new things like honey for your tea see if it works for you see if it makes sense uh, it could be anything any kind of cooking any kind of gear setup um, but to be away from the house actually boating into a location seems to add the X factor if you don't have it right here you just don't have it and it kind of helps frame your mind in a better way to preparing yourself for the trip you can't just go up in there so if you don't have something right here you feel it a little more than if you're just in your backyard all right let's see what we got about this chili here and like I say this is from the general store at Saks Baha and I got to admit before I came out I took a couple bites it is uh it's pretty good Important to note, if you're pouring hot liquid into a hydro flask to drink, especially right away in a hydro flask that's anywhere up to the next seven hours, get it to the temperature you want to drink it at. Don't boil that water because you will uh, simply not be able to drink this for a long time unless you add cold water to it because these things hold the heat. So yeah, that's a lesson I've learned a few times. Get it just to where you want to drink it. If you're here on a nice day, you might as well try out your sleep system, which is this particular one. It's like being back in your mama's womb. It's just, it's hard to beat. Just get in there, make sure your feet aren't all muddy, dirty. I always try to keep my feet clean. Tell you what, I might just stay here for just a minute. Just sit you guys down right there. That's it, that's kayak camping practice. And there's not much else to it. Whatever else you think you might wanna add into your kayak camping experience, you might wanna try coming to a body of water, boating into your site, picking the site, setting up in an unfamiliar site and making it all happen and seeing if you have any holes in your system. And then also start thinking about making everything into a system. Every time I pack my boat up, it's the same way. Every time I do, the unpacking every time I do something it's a it's a system so that I don't set something down and forget it or I don't put something in the boat and leave it there maybe I don't want to leave my ridge line on the tree I've done that a couple times so every time I do everything I make a system out of it so that I know everything's in its place everything's being done and nothing's being left out and that starts packing at home and it also is every night if you're on a multi-day trip and you leave a piece of gear you're in trouble and there's no way to feasibly go back up that river and get it so you're just gonna have to make do without it and uh, then you are have to purchase a new piece of gear so we want to avoid all those things turn everything into a system and then start practicing your system pretty cool little thing I've done this several times in the past and I haven't done it in a while and I haven't made a video about this so I figured I would um, 
the funny thing about all this is is that somewhere deep inside of your soul this tricks you into thinking you actually went kayak camping i mean you're still getting the views the sun out on the water the sounds the the smells the air get to lay in a hammock for a little while peace and quiet and that's really what kayak camping is all about anyway and all i had today was three hours between finishing up some work and having to pick the kids up from school and i already feel refreshed and to top all that off i know i can still set my camp up so go out practice some hammock camping enjoy yourself figure it all out before you have to while you're out on the river i'm going to pack this all up and head on home <laughs> Let me show you how I wrap up my cordage and I get a lot of people ask me about this but basically I have a length of cord with an S-beater on it and I just put that between my hand right there grip it go around my pinky back through the thumb around the pinky and I just weave it on my hand just like that and you get about that far from the end you pinch it take the tail wrap it around itself and over and just make it nice and pretty as you come back up through the last time you want to put that little tail through the last little loop that you made and then pull it tight then your cordage is all secure it stays in your cordage bag you know how I like to throw things around they don't unravel just do that every time when you get to camp and you want to use this cord, you just simply find that little place there where you can pull that out. And then just got your whole cord, no tangles. It's like magic. Thank you. 